In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how to name ethers. And what you see here is an ether. An ether always has, let's say, an alkyl group, then an oxygen, then another alkyl group. So let's see how to name this. Step one here, what you want to find is the longest carbon chain on either side of the oxygen. And of course, for this particular case, that would be the right-hand side. This is going to give us the parent name of this molecule, and in this case, three carbons means propane. Now, for step two, getting the correct numbers here, remember, what's not in the box is a substituent. So that means we would want to number this way, so we can put this substituent right here on carbon one. Which brings us to step three here. How do we label this substituent? Well, notice there's a methyl and then an oxygen. So what you would call this then is meth oxy. So what's new here is we're learning how to label these things as substituents. The rest is really just doing all the same things we did before in nomenclature. So now we're ready for step four here. Let's place him into the name here. This would be 1-methoxypropane. Now, what I just used here is the IUPAC method of naming this molecule. But there is kind of a common way to name ethers. And there is slightly a system here. And let me just briefly show you how this works. And let's use our same example here. If you were to name this using the common method, you would first notice the alkane type groups on either side of the oxygen, like this. And then you would think of their names. This one would be propyl, if you thought of it as a substituent. And this one would be methyl, which means you're ready to construct the common name here. You would simply list each group here in alphabetical order. So methyl would come first. Then you would leave a space and list the second group here, the propyl. Then you would leave another space and then put the word ether. So you could also call this molecule methylpropyl ether. However, for the rest of this lecture, we're going to stick to the IUPAC method. So let's look at another example here. Name the following molecule. Notice we can see that it is an ether. We have two alkyl groups on opposite sides of an oxygen. So for step one, let's find the longer chain. And of course, that would be this right here. Because again, remember, this is the other side of the oxygen. So that's going to define the parent name of our molecule. If you count, there's seven carbons there in the box. So this is going to be heptane. Now for step two, the correct numbers here. Of course, in this case, we want a number from right to left because we want that O ethyl group there on a low numbered carbon as possible. And that brings us to step three here, circle and label. This right here is two carbons big, remember, so that means eth. Oxy is what we name this. So we're ready for step four, putting this all together. This molecule is 3-ethoxyheptane. Now let's look at another sample problem here. What's the name of this ether? Well, step one, let's find the longest side here. And in this case, it would be this side of the oxygen. And if you see, you have four carbons in that box. That makes this butane. Now, step two, when it comes to numbering here, we would want to number from left to right in this case. That puts a substituent on carbon one and a substituent on carbon three. Which brings us to step three here. Let's circle and label here. Notice that top one is just simply a methyl substituent. And this other one here, notice it has three carbons in it and we're connected to the central carbon. That means isoprope. And because we're connected to an oxygen as well, we're going to call this isopropoxy. So that gets us ready here for step four. Let's put this all together. In alphabetical order, we should list the isopropoxy first. So we have one isopropoxy, and then we have three methyl, and then butane. 